Meeting is being recorded. Hello there, everyone. Hello there, everyone. Hello there, everyone. Hello there, everyone. And the 52 week art challenge. Are you hearing an echo over there? No. Okay, welcome back to the echo on my side, part low art 52 week art challenge. I am Mama Neff, and each week we talk about a new piece of art I've made or have reimagined. Have reimagined along with special guest artists working in different disciplines who also talk about their creative processes and practices. Afterwards, make sure to visit partlowart.com where, where you can see more of my work. And remember to click that notification bell, give us a thumbs up, leave a comment and subscribe to the channel. Okay. Um, for this week, week three, I'm so happy to have my friend, the renowned actress, playwright, poet, director, theater scholar. I may be missing some things. Dancer, singer, Jackie Terry. Hey, yeah. Jackie. Welcome hey, sweetheart. Home. I'm good. You know, I'm just still navigating all of the technical stuff here, but I'm really, really glad that pushing beyond that and just sharing the process, you know, which is part of our process too. Um, yes, it is. Yeah, making it work, making it work with what we have. So when you were first on, you were sharing about your experience doing Kabuki theater, which is just so fascinating to me. So we're going to pick up where we left off on that conversation which was a whole lot of things, a lot, a lot, a lot of things. Um, I'll lead you in and then you can take over. Um, okay. Do you, do you see yourself doing more of it or doing it again? And if so, under what, hmm, what, I won't say circumstances, but what environment, what creative environment would you do it again in? Yeah. I'm pretty much open to doing it again, but there's some restrictions. Um, first of all, first off, being is what we did is primarily being is primarily performed by males. And that has a lot to do with the history of the theater. So us doing it at, at school at UW was um and by UW University of um University of Wisconsin, Madison. Um Sensei Fuomoto was very progressive. Mm. I mean, you know, um, he included both, you know, all genders, whatever, however you chose to identify, everybody was included. Yeah. So to take that role of being that particular character was traditionally being performed by a male. However, if ever the opportunity I was invited to come into that space and share that space, I would approach with the utmost respect. Mm -hmm. Uh -huh. But um, I because now I have some insight on what it is. I have a deep, deep, deep sense of respect for it. Mm -hmm. Its origins, all of it. Oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna pull up some of the pictures that we want to show. This meeting is being recorded. So here, um, this is Jackie Terry doing Kabuki theater. Um, for, you know, the makeup, I always loved. I remember the first time I saw Kabuki Theater and I just fell in love with it. The starkness, it feels and looks like a, a canvas. Um, mm -hmm. Tell us, being, being, a, being a chocolate woman, tell us what that was about. And yeah, the whole process um. of losing your chocolate ness <laughs> into this the tradition not just the character but into the tradition what was that like um transformative i have to say um and i was given an option of either using a modern version of the makeup or using the traditional version of the makeup the traditional version of the makeup which is what i opted is lead based 
So in order to protect your skin, you have to put on a layer of beeswax Whoa. all over the edges of your body that you're going to expose to that makeup. Um, and then you apply it. It's like a, it's like a little cake. And you apply it with a wet brush and you get the brush really, really nice and, and um, damp with the makeup. And then you just start from where you, where you apply it, get it all on everywhere you need to get it, including your neck and your back. Because if you ever notice when you're wearing a kimono, the kimono tends to drape a little bit in the back instead of sitting high up on your shoulder. So every area of your skin is about to be exposed. Mm. Uh, it oh. has to be covered makeup how far up your arms did you have to bring it all the way up <sighs> all the way up because just in case you know the the sleeves of come on moves that can't be any exposure in my skin at all mm -hmm. um, my ears if you notice my ears are done behind my ears back of my neck all of that mm -hmm. so yeah. all of that has to be beeswax down my eyebrows had to be beeswax down mm -hmm. and let that Right. And then after that, you put the makeup on and depending how well you put the makeup on, it you can either be very, very smooth or if you don't do something as simple as moisturize, it could streak. Ooh. Ooh. So now, now it's extra time you're trying to get in character and in makeup. So I'm a pretty, you know, I'm a pretty fast learner when it comes to makeup. I, I sit at the front of the class for that one. Yeah, yeah, you, you can always be the face. You gotta always be the face from way back. <laughs> I am a witness to that. Jackie Terry can do a face. And look at this. So, look at this is just so the makeup for this particular character is very, very specific. Mm -hmm. And um once Sensei showed me how to do it, it's like they're not gonna come in every day and do your makeup for you. Once you learn it, you have to know how to do it. Ah. So, because it was this was the opening to a second play, we were all sitting in the room and we were all getting ready for these characters, these specific characters. This lady right here was one of my dressers. Mm -hmm. uh, she was a graduate student uh, um, when I was there, and she was she was taking my theater class. She took introduction to theater, and she took um, theater for cultural and social awareness, mm -hmm. and. Uh, She's like I said, uh, so it takes, I was looking at uh, Kabuki Theater on YouTube and it takes anywhere between three to seven people just to get you dressed. Wow. Wow. So if you're playing more than one character, then you're talking quick changes, which means the more quick changes you have, the bigger your 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 um, crew is be it backstage to get you in and out of costume. That... Uh, that kimono was very, very heavy. It felt like a duvet. <laughs> so imagine having to do four or five changes in that type of silk lines and all of that and being able to get in and out and in and out of costumes. Fortunately, that was not my, <laughs> that was not my, that was not my ministry that day. <laughs> so uh -huh. <laughs> getting into this character was enough. But it, I had three people that once I got in makeup, they were already on standby, just ready to get me into my undergarments. And it's interesting because the undergarments look like African, look like African lapas, which I thought was very, very interesting. There's a skirt that goes on that ties actually like a lapa. Wow, wow. There's a, there is a top that goes over. You can see it here in the top where the collar is. Oh, okay. That okay. underneath Why? it too. Oh, okay. Yeah. And and it's very specific of how you have to wrap from left side first, then right. Mm. So all of it has to be done the same way from under the garments all the way through. Mm. And then after that, that sash goes on. And I didn't get a picture of it in the back, but there's a big, big obi in the back. Mm -hmm. That's it's a huge, huge bow that is mounted onto feels like stainless steel. All I know is that once they slid it inside the sash, it automatically corrected your posture, made you stand up straight. Oh. So, so, so each part of this is, it sounds like it sounds you're getting dressed. Um, 
the character is coming fully to life. Absolutely. Absolutely. Fascinating. Mm. Tell us about this, this picture. This is a dance. And if you notice the lady in the middle, um, she's in full, um, she's in full kabuki costume, including the wig. Uh, the, the little socks we have on our feet are called Tabi because they're to be worn with sandals. Mm -hmm. And uh, the name of this dance, it's a dance that we're doing. It's called Hana no Sode. Hana no Sode. And, mm -hmm. and um, very beautiful movement. Like I said, everything is directional. Like the dance starts off all of us pointing in one direction. Mm -hmm. As the fans move around, we point to another direction. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it's so graceful Ooh. so so graceful you know i'm gonna this is one of my fat i'm gonna go back and do it again playing around this is one of my favorite onagatas an onagata is a female actor is a man playing the role of a female actor. So this is one of my favorite onagatas. Her name is Aganmaki. She's a concubine, a very high priced concubine. And she has, she gets to choose who her paramours are to be. She is so popular and so well respected among the samurai that no one comes to her. She decides mm -hmm. who she who she, who she gets to her to her, her house and who she doesn't. So, and this was another role that was also played by my sensei. Mm -hmm. Who was that back there? Yeah, I don't know. It's that face. It's like, who was that? <laughs> now this was a, this was a showcase that we did uh, for the end of semester. Oh, okay. The week before that, I also did a, I had did a Shakespeare showcase. Mm -hmm. So since they decided, since we're doing Shakespeare, yeah, let's, let's, do kabuki theater as well. Yeah. Looks like a little. Let me go here. Mm. And that's a different posture. And from that posture, I am gathering. If you notice, my fan is down into my sash. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the posture of, um, of a Yakuza. Mm -hmm. So basically, you know, he's kind of like a mob man. Ah. Yeah. So and you had to know all those postures and how they walked. Mm, different different walk for a different posture. Specificity was very, very keen. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Here, I'm a samurai. Oh, oh, I was wondering because I said, look at that look on her face. She's fit. What does she do? She 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 ready for somebody. She coming for somebody. No, somebody has come for her. She's like, oh, I'm like, what is going on here? <laughs> But here's the thing, even though I'm playing a male's role, it, I, I'm noticing in the Asian community, they, they ain't big on giving women large knives. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> ain't playing that. <laughs> so that's kind of, it, it's a small distinction, but it's a distinction nevertheless. Where I, a true male samurai, I would have a samurai sword. <laughs> but women who are part of 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 the house of a samurai, it was very important. She carried a small knife because she is the least intimidating. Mm. She's the deadest. Because she's got that tiny knife, yet yeah, she can do damage. She can do damage. Oh, absolutely. And yeah, we know what a switchblade would do. Hmm. <laughs> Listen, and it's samurai shop on both sides. So yeah. Uh, uh, woo. I love this. I love this. this is like, is she cutting dance. up? Were you cutting up? Oh, actually, actually, she's she's laughing at a would-be paramour. <laughs> I got all that from your face. Like <laughs> <laughs> do you remember the line that went with that or? I don't, and I don't have the book in front of me. It's in my collection of books that I've purposely kept out, but they're in my storage right now. Mm -hmm. But now it's got me curious. I want to go back and get it. 
and look at the script again mm. because I, I I really enjoyed playing her very much. Wait a minute, this is this is for me. That's the money shot. It's like <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> she really was laughing. Oh wow! And oh. it's it's not, it's impolite for a Japanese for for an onagata to laugh out loud, so she would hide behind her tissue. Ah, okay. But I was like, what is going on with my girl here? Is she she cutting up? Did she break character or what? Oh, you were just like, yeah. okay. Um, this meeting is being recorded. Yeah, that's what a bear yeah, that's what a bear You all who keep coming back, thank you so much. And as we move through and learn, you know, different things and all, that was just... So this is the second time you've talked about it and each time in your, your explanations and bringing us into that experience, it, I, I felt catapulted into the experience, not having seen the show or knowing the script, but the persona and how you were holding it. Which you know speaks to your gift because because you do that that's what you do you inhabit body you inhabit the character you become it, um, and just and and with the added elements of the makeup, and the costume and the movement and the gestures I guess that's why I asked it's like oh I would just love I would love to see that in general because I like. Spooky theater, but there's something about a black person doing it too. Um, yeah, and I would uh, say that it's cultural appropriation, but just that's a something like seeing that. I think of it now more in terms of cultural appreciation as opposed to appropriation, mm -hmm. um, which is why um, if I ever got an invitation, first of all, that would be a first in, in Asian culture period. Because even though Kabuki Theater was founded by a woman, because of the prevalence of prostitution, they restricted it to men and boys, but they, and eventually they just had to restrict it to men, period. Oh. Because little boys, the same, the same issues came up. So now, now it once they made it an all-male theater, like its predecessor, no theater, um, it's remained that way to this day. But the training, the training, the training, and mm -hmm. what I got in that one year, that eye for detail, you, you know, your sensei is really on it that you, that your everything is just precise because mm -hmm. you're telling a story and it usually the story is about some high moral values, some, some, some type of Buddhist philosophy that guides your, you know, your day-to-day -day living, a morality lesson or something. There's some storytelling going on with that. Mm -hmm. So, so it's really fascinating to watch a fully male uh, um, man inhabit that 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 space as an onagata, mm -hmm. and the gestures, all of it. It's it's at how it has to be refined. Mm -hmm. So that there's absolutely no distinction between you know whether or not you're a man or not. Perfect example of that. If you ever saw uh, Madam Butterfly. Mm -hmm. Perfect okay. example. Yes. Perfect example. I mean, the, the general that fell in love with, with uh, the geisha mm -hmm. could not make the distinction that the geisha was actually a man. And they really did fall in love because it was, it was um, the fascination of it all, the titillation of it all. Mm -hmm. And the mystery. Because when you're in that makeup, it's hard to tell whether you're a man or a woman. Yeah. You know, I, you know, I got these, I got these big old girls sitting up here. So, you know, ain't no, jacket, you know, loaded like that. <laughs> <laughs> so ain't no question I'm a woman, but, you know, in other instances, yeah, to watch them in wig, in costume and, and so ultra feminine, mm. you know, and then they go home to their wife and the children and that's the furthest thing from their mind. It's like, but this is. This is the family I was born into. This is the tradition that I carry. So it's an honor to be third, fourth generation kabuki and belonging to a, a traditional kabuki za. 
Once again, art mirroring life. <laughs> um, you know, I'm thinking in terms of process and opportunities to do our work, right? Mm -hmm. Playing in, in the first, um, in our first recording, um, how you were at University of Wisconsin Madison. This is your first mm -hmm. year. And if I'm not mistaken, all of the other roles for the required plays that you had to take were filled, were casted. So absolutely and, absolutely. and meet the requirement of that program, you had to act in a production, but all of the Rex, you know, regular productions that um, were already cast, those roles were filled. And so your sensei, out of the graciousness and goodness of his heart, because he could have very well went with uh, some other actor of Japanese descent or, you know, some Asian other yeah. ethnicity, but he chose you. And then how you got one of the rare opportunities as an African descendant actor to play that role. And so I'm thinking about how in general, as actors, as, as creatives, as dancers, visual artists, um, how, how opportunities come to us, you know? It seems like a door may seem like it's closed, but when we pivot, right? Mm -hmm. um, we just pivot, it's like, okay, that's cool. I'm gonna do something else. It's a Shaka Khan, I heard her say this one time. She said, I sing because I have to. Yeah. I make things every day because I have to. And so we pivot and then what turns out, what was intended to be a struggle was intended for you to be a struggle, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. Turn out to be a once in a lifetime opportunity and how if we just stay focused, we don't get sidetracked, um, stay vigilant in our practices, stay open. There's always, just out of the, 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 the essence of our own minds, we can create opportunities. Absolutely. You know? And it also, it means so, so much. I'm, I, I promise you, I can't say enough, enough honorable things about Sensei. It, him as a director, him as a professor, mm. um, his tenderness and his strength were really, it really ushered me into that role with confidence. I noticed that whenever we had, uh, whenever we were doing samurai practice or whenever we were doing dance or whenever we were going over lines, he would watch me watching him. Mm. So he kind of took ex he, he took notice of the fact that I paid attention to everything from head to toe to hand gesture to how he kneeled, how he bowed, everything, because it was such an absorption of, yeah, how often do I get this opportunity and let me not miss this wonderful opportunity to work with this wonderful human being. Mm -hmm. So by the end of my first year, I had absolutely such a love and appreciation for him and him me. Because mm -hmm. like I, I shared uh, at an earlier time, later on when I got a ch an opportunity to, for us to share histories, you know, because later on he did a Derek Walcott piece and I just happened to have information on that particular history of that particular culture. So we shared library experiences, we would share notes. Um, he was always kind of looking in on me Mm -hmm. not looking in because his office was directly from mine. So he kind of, in his own subtle way, took me under his wing. And for that, I'm forever grateful. And that's another thing. That's an important thing. The angels that we meet along the way. Mm -hmm. The mentors, the people who are looking out for us that we don't even realize 
have our back, our front, our sides, above us, below us. I'm telling you, I'm telling you. Flesh, I'm inclined to journal about this. I may do that right after we finish, just recalling the angels along the way. Because um, we live, you know, we live such full, full, full lives. And I said in the, um, the first video, you know, the things that people see, the performances, the productions, the exhibits, the recitals, the concerts, that's the work out there. The yeah. 90, 95% of it is happening back here. And it's us, and we do not do it alone. There are people, yeah. our family, I know for me, my, my family is my foundation. And then those angels, and they're there. And they're I think all we have to do is show up. Ooh, it just hit the table. Show up. You showed up to it. You didn't say, oh my goodness, it's just like, let me go find. Show up to it. And the angels will be there. They're there because I'm I'm biased, you know. I really do believe we are well, going back. Where are you? <laughs> we are the center. <laughs> We are the center point and we stand, you know. I haven't yet seen, someone please correct me, no group of people, and I'm talking about artists worldwide, can bring people together like we can. In a single moment of just sharing and oneness. And yeah, and so because of what we do, the ways we bring people together, what we give that defines the quality of life, you know? I just think there are forces out there. They're gonna take care of us. Yeah. Make sure we, you show we, we do. Work. We, because you show the world is like, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I have an affirmation I like this to This meeting is being recorded. Okay. What were you saying there? You have some information. Leave everybody with. And this one fit so perfectly because um, I received a lot of yeah, interesting energy for coming back to grad a graduate school when I was 53 years old. I graduated when I was 55. That just two months short of my 56th birthday. And I think this is the energy that I carried with me because when I saw it, I'm like, yeah, this is it. And it goes like this. You can rise up from anything. You completely recreate yourself. Nothing is permanent. You're not stuck. You have choices. You can think new thoughts. You can learn something new. You can create new habits. All that matters is that you decide today and never look back. That's right. And that goes to, that credit goes to Dr. Howard Mandel. Mm, what a beautiful tribute and contribution. Yeah. yeah that's a blessing there, what you just read. Oh, yeah. Oh, pursuing a PhD, I'm 57. If, if I'm lucky, I'll finish next year. I'll be 68, you know? But it's like yeah. something more important and bigger than my age and that it's called me forward as an artist and all i gotta do is be obedient that's it I'm that's it and that's all 76 you know and showing up and being the oldest one in every 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 class everything every you know? class. Every class. <laughs> and look and with your hands on your hip going yeah okay and what yeah right <laughs> <laughs> Hey, baby, how are you? <laughs> okay, how you doing? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go here. So I'm gonna share as soon as this thingy goes up. Um, my third, so many technical things. My third piece in this 52 week challenge, week three. Um, like a lot of my work, they start off on the way. That's why I said in addition to creating new works. I'm also reimagining other works um, that I've done before. 
so with this, this piece that I'm about to show you started off as, this is um, a mask, it's plaster. I call it the Nappy Buddha. It was my way of just um, reimagining the common icon of Buddha. Icon of Buddha. And imagining, imagining Buddha as, as African. And there's some people, and help me out here, Jackie, there's some people who argue that Buddha was, in fact, of African descent, you know, but one day mm -hmm. watching this thing, it's like, okay, so I had this plaster of this Buddha head, and I mounted it on this heavy piece of plastic in the background here, and it's about circumference, it's about 14 inches in circumference, and then, um, ink I painted the face because it was gold black and so that's acrylic and then I call these little bantu knots here oh yeah <laughs> black and then the kenta cloth and these are my aunt Marion Thomas blessings to you she's an ancestor now when she passed she had a whole lot of pearls and she had some that apparently had broken and she probably intended to restring them never did so i got those and there was some way of making use of those pearls so i added it here so this is how it starts and this actually just sold a couple of weeks ago this piece it's a big wall piece i actually since that photograph i actually added more kenta cloth to it <laughs> just went full kenta so the kenta cloth was on one side so i was looking at it and it was like what you know what else can it be sometimes the piece is actually, you know, I'm, I know this sounds a little woo woo, but they really do speak to me in the way of um, it calling me to rethink, reimagine it. So then I um, wind up doing this. I took a photograph of the piece and I did some, some graphic manipulation of it by texture. Um, mm -hmm. And I printed it on canvas. I love printing things on canvas. So I got there and I was, um, I think I made um, initially those canvas patches. I think I just sold the patches. But then I started thinking, okay, so what else can I do with it? So I put the patch on some poster board and took some of these, these pieces here. Dear friend of mine, Schroeder Cherry, gave me a whole bunch of these um matting boards these these angles here yes so people give me stuff all kinds of stuff i mean old jewelry um heirloom stuff <laughs> these these pieces of matting board material all kinds of things because they know that i just love making stuff out of stuff so i finally found a use for this and so i put that they mounted the, the canvas piece there, put some kenta cloth, had some um, tiles. That was fun. Large tiles and little tiles and mirrors and some more Ron Marion's beads. And so it went from there to this. And I took another picture and then I did some, just did some graphic, you know, I guess, what do I call it? Um, imaging of that original piece, just to see it differently. You know? So I, and I printed that on canvas as well. Just did some manipulation of the image, graphic manipulation. And then that evolved into this week's piece. Which oh. This. So I had these, when I initially printed the photograph on canvas, it was about mm, six inches by four right then I made them a little smaller and I'm gonna stop sharing here and then I did that to it can you see that so, that is gorgeous oh thank you so I was just I just yeah beads these are little beads and appliques and ink just to highlight what was the kenta cloth Mm -hmm. old leaf and some stuff I found in Michael's. I don't really know what this stuff is. Where's the stuff? I put this stuff away. I don't know where the stuff is, but it's some stuff. Um, it feels plasticky, but maybe it's not glass. 
Anyway, I like the stuff. I have to find out what this stuff is made of. I'm experimenting with it. And it's like, so I put that um, piece here that was originally printed on the canvas. And I was like, oh, bet, a card. <gasps> so, yeah, so you just, people just can write in it or I can write in it. And I wrote my handwriting on the back, you know, copyright stuff, because I got to remember to do that. So this mm -hmm. is to show um, that process because I work in my journals and I won't go into that. I'll go into that in another video. And there's sometimes there are pages that stand out. And so I'm like, always thinking, like, how can I take that and do that, something with that page? What is that page? Sometimes the pages just are like, they, they want me to do more things with them. Yeah. And they wind up getting, you know, photographed and turned into something. Else. So yeah, this piece, um, mixed media coffee, I call it, Nappy Buddha, beads, this stuff, which I have to find out, gold foil, ink on heavy card stock. It's about, I think this is like four and a quarter high by three and three quarters wide. Okay. Yeah. I think I'm on this thing. I think I want to do some more of these this week. That's a very special um, greeting card. Mm -hmm. And I even I had some of these sleeves from something else. So I was like, oh, yeah. So I could put them in a little plastic sleeve. Let me do it. Mm -hmm. Put them in a little plastic sleeve like that. Down in there. Fold it over, which then, you know, so this falls like this, and then in the back, and then that made me want to go to, I just found a paper store. Oh <laughs> Getting ready to blow February's budget. <laughs> Gorgeous paper, all kinds of things. So I'm going to go in and get some pretty little stamps, you know, to put on the back. And then, yeah. <laughs> Would ceiling wax be too much? <gasps> no, but that would be so much. I'm just thinking. No, I'm just. I love that, and just to put the wax in the in the and seal it. Yeah. So, <laughs> so you could be like, guess what I got this week? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Toys. They love to see me come. They're like, oh, we gonna get some money today. Here she come, and I'll be in there. Here she come. Okay. Turn it up pockets inside out. <laughs> All in the name of art. <laughs> All in the name of art. And the moral of that story is um, be very intentional when you go into like yes. a store. Yes. Like, really focus. I'm in here for this. I'm not going to go down that aisle. I'm not looking over there. I'm going right here because I know. Week three. That's week three of the 52 week. Art challenge. Thank you, Jackie. For being Thank you. Here. I hope you come back. I hope you come back and talk about some of your other experiences, you know, across disciplines. Thank you all. Thank you all so so much for showing up and joining us. Um, looking forward to you okay. coming back. Make sure you look below. You can see the link below to partlowart.com. And and the link, I think it's over there. <laughs> or maybe it's over there, depending on where I am on the screen. Um, the subscribe button. Yeah, we're we're working on our first 100 subscribers. We're working on the first with the subscribers. Yes. So please, uh, yeah, subscribe. And um, because I'm also learning about YouTube, once we get to 50, then I can do some different things. I think we can record or whatever. They just sent me a whole new list of what they do differently. So I'm reading that. Yeah. So help us do that and, and leave us a comment. We would uh, appreciate your comments. Artists out there. Hey, any artists out there who've done Kabuki theater? We'd love to hear from you. Um, wouldn't that be, hmm? wouldn't that be, that would be really nice? Yes. Yeah. So yeah. Hashtag Kabuki theater. And uh, yeah. give us a thumbs up. Till next week, everyone. Much, much love. Take care of yourselves. Bye.